Employers of Reddit, what things said during an interview made you want to hire that person immediately? Guy turned up to an entry level engineer position with a blank notebook and pen, and took notes. That impressed everyone. But what really sealed the deal was, that he then emailed each person on the panel with follow ups to any questions, that they asked, that he thought needed further clarification. He starts next week. I don't know. I'd know where to look it up though closely followed by, during a Kabayashi Meru style drill, I'm a little unsure, this sounds like a serious incident first thing I would do, is alert someone else to the situation, so that they're aware of it, even if I don't need help right away. Someone who admits their limitations, and isn't afraid to ask for help, is worth so much more than someone with more knowledge, that tries to sort it themselves without asking for help. You can always learn knowledge, you rarely find someone that selfless. Not so much one particular thing, but if the interview turns into a lovely conversation, then I'm more likely to hire someone. When I was doing an interview, someone mentioned that they worked as someone who elicited donations on the street. One of my interview panelists made a remark of how much he hated those people, and she flipped that on its head, and basically said, if you're the worst client here, then I'll have no problem dealing with difficult clients. For context, I wasn't a fan of the interview panelist. That shutdown basically made me give her perfect scores. It didn't work out in the end because of scheduling, but I was so close to just high-fiving her right then and there. I'm not an employer, but I used to interview people in college for admission in cultural clubs. There was this one girl who responded to my question by saying, can I take a few minutes to think about that? That impressed me, because everyone else just answered with whatever came into their mind, and since this particular question was a bit tricky to answer, most of the time their answers were bullshit or incoherent. By taking a few minutes, she managed to plan out her answer, and showed us that she was a critical thinker. I immediately welcomed her into the club. Anytime someone appears, shows sincere excitement for the job. And not just the job, but the company and industry too. We can train employees on specific skills, but no training program can spark enthusiasm for a field that they truly don't care for. I was the person who got hired, not the boss. I was applying for a job working in a group home for disabled adults. One of the questions on the forms they were having me fill out was, it's 12am on a Saturday night. One of the toilets isn't working. What do you do? I wrote up a step-by-step -step diagnostic plan with solutions for each problem. Explained how to repair just about any issue that could go wrong with a toilet. They took my papers into the back, leaving me to cool my heels in the waiting room for a while. The owner of the home came running out all excited and asked me if this was my application. I confirmed it. He hired me on the spot. He said that I was the only person who'd ever said that they'd fix the toilet. Everyone else would call maintenance, or reach out to a supervisor or find another way to get help, or put up a sign and direct the residents to the other bathroom. Guess they were looking for a problem solver. Girl fresh out of college, was interviewing for an entry level medical sales rep trainee job. I asked her about the first job she ever had. When she was 15 to 16, she would skateboard to a car wash, so she could save up money, so she could buy a car of her own. Sounds good and noble so far, right? Well, additionally, that car wash was staffed with prisoners on a work release program. So she was a pretty teenage girl who was absolutely unafraid of working with prisoners. If she wasn't intimidated by that, I knew the job we were training her for wouldn't scare her. Turns out I was right, she's been great, and is about to get promoted. Understanding her own areas for improvement. I like to ask, if I called your last manager, what would they say you are great at, and what would they say you need to work on? You don't need to agree. I had one woman who was very quiet, and the position was for my biggest and pushiest client. I had concerns she would hold her own, if customer slash vendors wouldn't push her around. Her answer was she would say that I'm too quiet, but I don't agree. I can hold my ground, I just don't have to be loud to do it. To this day, she was my best admin. When I managed my father's business a while back, I had two opportunity to personally interview and hire people. I thought you, this is gonna suck. And it did. Sometimes, two people have stood out that made me want to hire that person immediately. Applicant 1 not only held the door open for a gaggle of grandmothers, but also pulled out each ones of their chairs. 
This was not at our business, this was at a random olive garden close to town that I was dining at. I thought, wow, I'd kill to have this guy on my team. I go to the office the next morning, and as I go through the applications, I do a quick facebook search, just to put a face to the name. I don't look at what they post, or who they're friends with, that's none of my business. Guess who applied last weekend at my father's business? Applicant 1. He got hired in at a much higher pay rate, manners shouldn't be rewarded, but with something rare nowadays, I thought it was worth it for business, and worked for 2 years, before going back to college. I hope you're well, applicant 1. Applicant 2. They caught me having sex with one of the waitresses, knowing they had a husband. It was the waitress friend. Not any particular phrase or action. I've already done research, looked through your portfolio, and know you're talented, impressive, published, etc. There are a lot of talented and impressive on paper people. Cool. You've done things and gone places. That's great. A go-getter attitude is superb, but it's not so much about what people say, but how they show who they are. I look for breadcrumbs of personality and character. A potential employee is not a checklist, nor should they be treated like one. They're a human, that I'm about to, potentially, place a lot of trust in and care about, and it goes both ways. The only people I've ever wanted to hire immediately were people that I'd worked with at past agencies, and I knew their personalities, integrity, yeah, I know every company lists integrity as part of their values, but seldom is it practiced. The people I've hired without knowing them in any aforementioned setting, I just sit down and talk to them, I'll let the conversation flow. Sometimes I hand a folder to someone and say what would you do if I handed this to you and said figure it out. I'm not looking for any template answer. I'm looking for someone that, essentially, isn't a dickhead. It's okay to be nervous. It's okay to be awkward. We are potentially going to spend 5 days a week together, and you're going to add tremendous value, and should be valued. It's nice when people do research, and ask questions too, but if they do research that's clearly, just because they are trying to find a buzzword. Robotic answers and robotic questions. Bleg. I wanted to hire my latest applicant before the interview if I'm honest. He reached out to me on LinkedIn, before applying to Touchbase. Asked about what made a good product manager etc. I was fairly brief, and told him to apply, because having looked at his LinkedIn I saw he had enough experience for the entry level paid internship we offer each summer. During the interview he was good to talk to, if he didn't know an answer he would admit it, and then think on it for 10, 20 seconds and then come out with how he would find out, or his assumption of a good starting point. What really sealed the dealies, when I asked if he had any questions he asked some very specific things about a blog post the company made about 3 months back. While that in itself isn't hugely interesting, our marketing department posts something fairly worthless once a week, unless it's from a specific department and this one has come from my department. He starts June 10th. Not an employer, but was once let down in an interview based on points, scored after answering it has never happened to the question in a previous job, how did you resolve issues when yourself or your team were underperforming? <laughs> Interviewed a guy who made this high pitch woo woo noise whenever we asked him a tricky question. It was so adorable we had to hire him, and to this day I don't regret it. He's a fantastic worker, great fun to work with and sounds like a slide whistle when everything gets stressful. I managed an entertainment retail store, movies, video games, etc. Was gonna hire the person anyway, but I always ask if they have questions for me. I just about lost it with, do you wanna see a magic trick? Guy proceeds to pull out a deck of cards doing sleight of hand. End up spending the next 20, 30 meters walking the store introducing him to the other employees asking him to do another. I can tell you what is an instant no hire, using buzzwords for no damn reason. Or textbook responses. I'd rather hire someone who is honest, imperfect and willing to put themselves forward vs someone who just reads off the corporate manual. A few solutions come to mind, but we'd need to look into the particulars, to figure out which would be right for the situation. I'm in web development and I cannot tell you how amazing it is to come across someone who truly gets that there are no perfect solutions. 
I interview so many idiots who think that Spark solves every data processing problem, that encryption solves every security problem, or that moving to the cloud magically fixes organizational communication problems. Positive attitude, multilingual, commitment to service. Most important concrete examples of work completed. Story time, if want more specific feedback. I had a great candidate on paper with lots of experience. They did not talk about their experience much, and answer questions about organization broadly like, stay on top of things, you know. Tell me specifics about your lists, and how you use technology, outlook, create spreadsheets, anything like that. Talk to me about using customer service, or prioritizing higher needs, and why they qualify as higher need. Don't say I make sure the most important needs are addressed first, how do you know those are important? Interviewers do not assume you know it, because of your experience. We want to see your process, and understand strengths and weaknesses. We know that there are many ways, to succeed in a job. How have you done that in the past? Examples. When I ask my scripted question of tell me about a time you met a critical demand, that resulted in excellent customer service, I want a story, even if you're not in my industry. Tell me about calming down an irate customer at the cash register, or completing a report for your boss, because they had a family emergency, or safely restraining a patient with a head injury, and giving a good report, that resulted in an accurate diagnosis. Give me something, not just I always give excellent customer service, or we treat every request as a critical demand at current company. If the example makes you look good, that's awesome. If you screw up in the example, and make it right, even better. Give me examples, with a clear beginning, middle, and end, that answer my questions. Go back in your ML or your diary, or whatever if you need to jog your memory. Have a few examples prepared for wherever you go. Good customer service, a mistake or failure, an ethical dilemma, and a work slash life balance story would all be helpful. Obviously I wasn't part of the hiring process for this, when I see this question. One particular event comes to mind. Matt Nagy, head coach of the Chicago Bears. Ryan Pace tells the story of why he decided on Nagy, that it was based on one particular thing he said. The Bears were desperate for a new head coach, and interviewed a lot of people with plenty of impressive resumes and experience, but Pace said that he only heard one person in the first round of interviews tell him point blank I want to be the head coach of the Chicago Bears. The Bears had just gone through John Fox and Mark Tressman, both men with impressive resumes coming in, but failed miserably because they were totally apathetic with the job they held. Pace sought out someone who not only had a good set of experiences, but also someone who actually wanted the job, and that's what sold him on Nagy. And so far, it has worked out pretty damn well. I interview artists to teach. It was amazing to interview somebody who showed me the work of their former students and spoke about lectures and lessons they had delivered, rather than only themselves as an artist. Some institutions are interested in hiring artists who have big names, but I'm more interested in what kind of education they can provide, 